So, Stugatz, I need to tell our audience and everyone here, wherever it is that you are tired of me talking about sports media, I totally get it. I am tired of me talking about it, too. It has been not, talk, not just talking about it, but living it over the last few years has been quite the illuminating experience because our business is changing. Anybody who's been with us for this long knows everything that happened with us, and it's an interesting thing to, in the pandemic, leave a safe thing that's changing and just sort of push ourselves into an unknown future where you're fighting for yourself, you're self-employed, and the media landscape is totally changing. And, oh, look, during that time, uh, Travis Kelsey and Jason Kelsey just built a giant entire empire. And look over here in that time. Shannon Sharp has decided to get in the game in a way that notices what McAfee is doing and says, well, I can be that because I'm going to be a workaholic late in life who competes the way I did at football. And watch what I do now when I get some power and some business. And Stephen A links up there and says, yes, welcome here. First take, we'll have a platform and we'll build all our own shit on ESPN because ESPN has changed. Everyone sees the game, right? Everyone sees McAfee's renting. McAfee's $17 million rents comes in and engulfs Stephen A's salary and renting. They don't own McAfee. McAfee plays there and gives what he wants to to them because he passed Stephen A. Let's not say in voice or face of a franchise, but did in money. And now Stephen A is coming up for a contract, and he just buried Skip Bayless. Mm -hmm. Ended his career because I told you at the beginning of this, Stugatz. Watch how the old guys in media who have always been the king's age, whether it's Jim Rome or Colin Cowherd, getting into business with Shannon Sharp as we get into business with all the smoke and now try to make big deals in the realm where J.J. Reddick resides, where he's saying to himself, okay, I've built this really cool thing over here. It's a plaything. It's a hobby. Do I want to coach with LeBron? Hmm. Charlotte's job, not enough. I'm going to go to the head of the line. What do I want to do with my life as someone who regrets not being around for my child on Christmas days? Do I want to compete against the media where it's an easy win because it's not as tough? They all just realized it, Stugatz. All of them. Wait, all I got to do is beat Levitard and Stephen A? <laughs> all I got to do is beat Cowherd? Wait, oh, whoa, the punter? McAfee can do that? How did he do that? I'm more famous than him. I'm I so was a much. Tight end. I've got, no, not. I'm, I, so Kelsey builds that, and now Amazon's bidding for that. And, and Jason Kelsey and his brother. Goes right to the front of the line. RG3, get out of here. Yep. You may have a media career, but it's not going to be on the biggest thing. No, Jason Kelsey gets that. A center goes right to the front of the line. That happened in the last three years. That happened, even though Travis Kelsey was in Stugatz's ear in Tahoe. Hey, how do I do this? That all happened. How do I do this? How do I get to where you guys are? That's the conversation in Tahoe. And how does he do it? In 10 minutes. Yep. As soon as he gets into the game, he does it. Now, J.J. Reddick. And I'm sorry if you're tired of hearing it, but it's been my life for three years, and it's been the second worst thing in my life in those three years because all of these athletes are coming for gambling money that is keeping the entire industry alive as ESPN and Disney shake so much that they got a rent to McAfee, and here comes Kelsey and Shannon Sharp. How do I use your platform to build what Stephen A. Smith did as Stephen A. Smith Every day on their air from 10 to noon is selling. I'm in a contract year. I'm the biggest voice you got, and I'm about to be a free agent to do whatever I want. Look at what I built here. I built this entire thing that has been number one for 12 years. I did it over Bayless. Bayless went over there and competed, did it the same way, lost. Has Paul Pierce using the N-word on Undisputed by Accident because that entire thing is caved in as Shannon Sharp and J.J. Reddick are sitting next to Stephen A. Smith, and he ages like that. I've told you I admire that man. Now, I don't love some of the things that he does to broaden audience because I don't think audience is always the most important thing. But as a conqueror, right. as a dude who knows how to win at this industry there has never been anyone better because look at the teammates he has now Stugatz he's gone and grabbed the best you can grab at what it is that they do which is make good television and he's got total power in a contract year 
about to leave ESPN as all the athletes around it. You're paying Joe Buck what? You're paying Troy Aikman what? How are they worth more than I am? How am I getting? And he's got a production deal, so it's just it's the big salary plus how do I build this with ESPN because you don't think that Omaha Productions and and Tom Brady and Stephen A, you don't think he wants to compete with him with them there for the big money. How do I partner? Omaha's got a 10-year deal, Stugatz. It's crazy. It's all yeah. built around Eli and Peyton are willing to join you from their basements. Yep. They are programming ESPN right now. Them and Pat Correct. McAfee. Correct. It yeah. used to be Nick Khan of CAA who was programming ESPN. He is now doing the wrestling stuff. He's now in live television bringing wrestling to Netflix. So this game has been my life for the hardest three years of my life, and I'm fascinated by what it is that's happening. Of course, yeah. J.J. Redick has been great on first take, uh, great on first take, uh, great uh, because he's smart, he knows the numbers, and now do I want to do a podcast with LeBron James and build that empire? Because, man, it's great dominating, making interesting content about the sport I love. Or do I want to coach LeBron James? That's the choice that one of the people on First Take who has used First Take very well has because the whole thing at ESPN is changing where everyone can lily pad, jump. You get there, they build your thing, you use them, you go to the next thing. McAfee can do that if he wants. You don't, you don't want Aaron Rodgers on next year? Okay, I'll do this somewhere else. You've helped me build it. Or I'll get Belichick. Right. Or Saban. Or, right, correct. Mm -hmm. And I will dominate whatever the future of ESPN becomes. But. The thing I wanted to get to as it relates J.J. Redick and Doc Rivers, because Doc Rivers, before J.J. Redick, played the media game better than anybody. Charisma, charm, doesn't matter how much I lose. I am great at just making you like me. And so I throw ESPN's entire <laughs> broadcast plan for the NBA into total upheaval. They kick out Jeff Van Gundy. They... Make a spot for me because I've been let go, and I immediately jump, well, I can coach Giannis. Okay, I've got a better job over here in actual sports, not sports media, which the athletes know they can conquer. It's easy. Doc Rivers has conquered media. That's easy. What he can't conquer is above him. Is He's won one title right. with a team for all time that birthed all the super teams, and J.J. Redick says things like this about him, and you will hear afterward – Doc Rivers' recent rebuttal with Stephen A. Smith. So play all of that sound, please. I've seen the trend for years. What's the trend? The trend is always making excuses. Get Doc, we get it. Taking over a team in the middle of the season is hard. It's hard. We get it. Just like getting traded in the middle of the season is hard for a player. We get it. Mm -hmm. But it's always an excuse. It's always throwing your team under the bus. They lose to Memphis. Oh, it's his players. Memphis was playing G League guys and two-way guys. And then you look at his quotes over the weekend. Now he wants to take credit. For the James Harden trade to the Clippers working out, he wants credit for that. There's just no, <laughs> there's never accountability with that guy. That was a couple of months ago, and everyone seized on it. A lot of people were hearing it for the first time, even though a lot of people know of Doc Rivers. He is extraordinary at the media game. Yes, he like, is. Like, just really great at how it is it that I get you to like me. Well, this is how. He rebuts J.J. Redick when he's on Stephen A. Smith's show this way. And what I want you to listen to is how candy sweet he is all around it while really insulting J.J. Redick. J.J. Redick was on the record getting on you pretty, pre pretty, pretty adamantly about some of the things that you were saying once you ultimately ended up in Milwaukee and talked about passing a buck or whatever. Did you ever, did you two ever talk about that? Did you ever resolve that with one another? No, no. I, you know, J.J.'s had a problem with me for a while, and that's fine. Players do. One thing, when you, when you coach Stephen A., you can be called a player's coach or whatever you want to be called. But if you make decisions that the player doesn't agree with, and in J.J.'s case, we didn't cite him back. Um, you know, in, with the Clippers, I stopped playing him as much uh, because he wasn't very effective in the playoffs. And, you know, that, that's all known. But I'm fine with that. Like, usually they all come back to you. Mm -hmm. They do. Uh, because they know everything you tried to teach them or do for them was in good. J.J. Reddick's best numbers of his career was under one coach, and you're looking at him. Right here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the one that grabbed him out of Milwaukee and decided to start him. From that point on, his career took off. Uh, all the movement plays, everything. First play of the game, 
every game when we played with the Clippers, you would have coaches and teams come up to you and say, you're not going to score on that first play with J.J. And I would always say, just watch us. We're going to figure it out. So overall, nothing but love for J.J. Obviously, there's things he doesn't <laughs> like, and I have no issues with him. Nothing but love at the end. That is a gift, man. I mean, <laughs> it's a gift if what you like is sandwiches because he said nothing but love no issues except for yeah i he's i'm the reason for all of his success and he didn't uh, he wasn't effective in the playoffs so i benched him and he wasn't very good the coach for his best season you're looking that's at that's right i'm the reason for his success it is the <laughs> version of brady versus belichick i'm the reason you won no i'm the reason and nobody is really no, no one, one really cares won but them <laughs> Well, but they care, though. The greatest, the doc, doc at the end, like, that is God almighty, Doc. So insincere. <laughs> but lovable. No, like you can tell no, fraudulent. Yeah. And if you don't like accountability and you like fraudulent, yeah, lovable. My